Powerpuff Girls 2016 is the biggest disappointment since my son. Wait, no. Disappointment would imply I had expectations for this reboot. I expect nothing. And I'm still let down. Other than adults desperate to recapture their childhoods, was there ever a demand for more Powerpuff Girls? Did it get cancelled too soon? Was a plotline left unfinished or a story arc left to expand on? No. Powerpuff Girls had six seasons and a movie. Six seasons and a movie! That was more than enough for a concept this simple. Little girls fighting a monster of the week. I never thought someone could be incompetent enough to fuck up a basic concept like Powerpuff Girls, but... Here we are, making an over kittle video on a children's show. <laughs> Don't consider this a rant. Consider this an overview, a review, if you will, on what made the original so unique and what made this just average. It's not the worst cartoon ever. It's just lukewarm. So let's find out why Powerpuff Girls 2016 is the fourth worst cartoon ever made in no particular order. Into the toilet I go. <laughs> Let's ask, what does the creator, Craig McCracken, who is not working on this reboot, have to say about the original being canceled? Cartoon Network came to us and said, well, what about seven? What about a seventh season? And Chris and I both said, no, I think it's time. It's over with. We want to kind of go out while it still was good. Hmm, question. Why did they bring the Powerpuff Girls back when there's other Cartoon Network shows like Courage the Cowardly Dog and Megas XLR and Kids Next Door that have their creator openly express interest in wanting to continue the series only to get denied by the network? What made Powerpuff Girls so special? Here is Sad but true, a major part of animation is toy sales. A lot of shows were taking out old Yeller style for not being able to make bank off their merchandise. Powerpuff is recognizable and marketable to parents buying toys for a new generation. Before the reboot premiered, we were already getting news of merchandise being sold. Bubbles, she plays all around. You also have Professor Plutonium that comes in this set, only this set. CN shows such as Adventure Time and Steven Universe never got merch till two, three seasons in. There's even a high fashion clothing line by Moschino. Oh, I fucking know this company. They were selling clothing with gangsta versions of the Looney Tunes for over a thousand dollars. This is utter shit I would walk past in my local Hispanic flea market for ten dollars next to Scarface posters printed on bootleg beach towels. Macklemore didn't die for this. If you bought this from Machino and not a flea market, just admit to yourself you're paranoid a brown person is gonna knife you to death. It's okay, I'm Hispanic too. I'm not here to judge, but I'll do it anyway. But you can just call her Maria. That's it, come on! <laughs> so, wasn't the old show created to sell merchandise? No, that came after. Maybe if we were lucky, we'd get maybe like a few t-shirts. I mean, that's all I really thought could possibly happen. And the next thing you knew, it, it blew up. I'll return to the topic of toy sales later, but let's get this question out of the way. The first thing I'm sure a lot of you will assume is I hate this reboot because it's different. No, look at all the versions of Ninja Turtles, X-Men, Transformers, Batman, you may not love them each the same way, but they're all so different that I can respect them as their own standalone series. Powerpuff Girls 2016 will be known for, hey, it's kinda like the old show, but not really. And even when you look at it as its own separate thing, it's just bland. What questions? <laughs> Woo! So what went wrong? Well, it starts with one thing I don't know why the characters. The showrunners went in with the intention to develop the characters more because apparently the old show was quote, very limited from a storytelling standpoint. They basically said, oh yeah, we can do better when really they could not. To prove my point, let's go over the girls like a speeding car in the school zone. <laughs> Blossom, the commander and leader. She's now Robin from Teen Titans Go or Lisa Simpson, obsessed with every single little thing being perfect. She was like that before, but now it's just too much. It brings our meaningless then. <laughs> Bubbles, the joy and the laughter. She f fucking loves memes and ponies and unicorns and yes. Yeah. 
and rainbows and cute shit and internet stuff. Holy shit. She loves most of this stuff before, but now she fucking loves it. Look at her face. It's an emoji. Fuck. Oh. But she also has a dark side. Remember in the old show when Bubbles wanted to show she was hardcore that one episode? <laughs> well, the joke in the reboot is that she acts cute, but she has a dark side, even though they all have that, so what's the point? Bubbles, please! Touch me again, and I will end you. That can't happen, Buttercup! I won't let it! I guess it's slightly funnier when the slightly cuter one does it. What blows is Bubbles does this way too often, so it really lessens the effect. Buttercup. She's the toughest fighter and has it the worst. She's a fucking bitch now. Did she always antagonize the teacher and physically abuse kids who didn't do anything to her? In the same episode, she trips a kid and is an asshole to the teacher. They shove an unrelated moral about having fun at the right time at the end. How about a moral about respecting your underpaid teacher or not bullying kids? The grammar unit is really important and grammar. More like... <laughs> It's like they wanted to give her more character. She's an asshole who learned a lesson. Now she's more likable and developed. This is the equivalent of some jack off smashing a vase and pasting it together like, look, I fixed it. Uh, no, you're the one who broke it. You put the plant in there. You water the plant. The water leaks through like that one Brady Bunch episode. <laughs> what new stuff can you do? Uh, I can. Yeah! Oh my god, what is their problem? Well, I think they're trying to be like Teen Titans Go, like how everyone is a dick. <laughs> Except the Titans often make fun of cartoons with morals and is a parody where everyone is a dick. Powerpuff Girls is doing the same, but it's not a parody. They want to force a positive, unrelated lesson for the kids in the same episode. And Blossom is present during Buttercup's mischief. You know, Blossom, commander and leader in charge, but she doesn't even scold Buttercup, even though they made Blossom really picky about everything being in order here, except when her sister's causing damage. They know not to hurt civilians, right? Oh no, we missed our stop. Don't worry. <laughs> really dangerous. Oh, okay. Bubbles is not allowed to hurt people, but Buttercup is. In a different episode, Buttercup loses her temper and does damage to civilians, property, and her own sister. She then learns to control her anger. So now Blossom steps in, it's wrong to cause collateral damage out of anger, but to do it when you're in complete control is okay? I guess they're only developed when it's convenient. You girls are developing into quite the superheroes. Sunday, Robbie is developed as you! <laughs> <laughs> it honestly does feel like all the writers had completely separate visions on what they want the show to be. The Powerpuff Girls of the 90s was a parody of superheroes. There were consequences to the damages done. The girls got in trouble for it. Often they felt shame to where they chose not to use their powers. They just wanted to do good but got more people to hate them. Do you realize the two crooks that you caught stole approximately $400? Do you realize that you did over three million dollars in property damage to that bridge? But you also destroyed my beautiful city! You are flying in a no-fly zone! Land now! They were just playing! They're really very good little girls! We're not supposed to use our powers. What now? We live over there, remember? These are only little girls who are probably cold. Oh, cold, cold. He cold. hates us! He totally hates us! Well, it seems that the hatred is running rampant for... Dog, newt, and bug-eyed... Freaks. Back to you, Linda. They are little freaks, aren't they? <laughs> 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 
That's even funnier and more tragic today with all the big budget superhero films ignoring all the damages until later movies. It's a parody still relevant. Powerpuff Girls is no longer a parody of superheroes. It's straight up just superheroes with the flaws the original ridiculed. It's like the writers didn't know what subtlety was. Precious little bubbles. She works so hard. Oh boy, don't do it! I'm telling the professor! It's like the writers didn't know what subtlety was. I never thought these girls could be more simple, but they found a way. They found a way. This reminds me of the episode Knock It Off where some corporate sleazeball named Dick Hardy shows up. Come on, Dick! We turn it now, Dick. Dick is good, right? It's on your mouth! For profit, Dick creates half-assed clones of the girls to sell to other cities for protection. Prepare to be stopped. Girl power! Girl power? Since when did you start saying girl power? I would understand if this was a parody like Teen Titans Go, but it's not. They're admitting they're trying to have more developed characters when, really, they're just way more in your face with their personality, and the world around them feels unpopulated character-wise, despite the more visually detailed backgrounds. It's so dense, every single image has so many things going on. There's so much focus on the girls that we never see much from anyone else in Townsville. In the classic show, it wasn't always about the girls. We often spent a good chunk of the episode from the villain or a side character's perspective. I love when stories do that, showing there's a world outside the view of the main character. You'll never guess what's for breakfast! Maybe it wasn't the intent, but perhaps that was the reason why each episode opened with The City of Townsville. But now, a lot of those other characters kinda just pop in here and there with no introduction. Like it was in the original, we have to force them in somehow. This cartoon is going to be a lot of kids' first introduction to Powerpuff Girls, but it doesn't feel like it was meant to be that way. It relies way too much on you knowing the original when a reboot shouldn't do that. This is marketed as a new series, right? The Powerpuff Girls, new series, starting Monday, April 4th at 6. Cartoon Network. Right. Their once main villain, Mojo Jojo's first appearance in this series is this. Mojo! What are you doing here? Me? This was your doing! It's funnier to us because we know he's both a powerful and comedic villain who right here has no power. But for a new generation, they're just like... Who the fuck is this? Is he like the neighbor or a pet like the monkey from Family Guy? Is he the same guy who was in the intro for less than a second and could easily miss? Are these guys criminals? They don't look very evil at all. Where's their prison uniforms? Why does this rich girl want to hang out with the Powerpuff Girls? And how come they don't let her? Why are they so mean to her? How come this narrator only shows up some episodes and not others? Ah yes, the annual school field trip to the zoo. Yeah, that's all they gave the narrator to say in this episode. The new intro doesn't even introduce the viewer to this world. Think about what you learned from the old intro. It's one minute long, but in just the first 30 seconds, you learn the ingredients, sugar, spice, everything nice, and chemical X created superpower girls who dedicated their lives to fighting crime and the forces of evil. Also, what's cool is without saying a word, you get an idea on what these girls are like. For the new intro, I will say it looks really stylish. Too bad it was designed and animated by a different animation studio and not Cartoon Network. There's a full two minute intro online, but they cut it down to 25 seconds in the actual episode. From this intro, all we know is the girls fight crime, have powers, that's it. There is no sugar, spice, everything nice, despite them making a joke about it in the show. Once again, jokes the new kids watching this reboot will not get. Pretty anticlimactic if you ask me. 
And do you remember at the end of each OG Powerpuff episode, they announce how the day is saved every single episode? So once again, the day is saved. Thanks to the Powerpuff Girls. Occasionally, they do a twist to surprise you. That's funny. The day is saved. Thanks to Mojo Jojo. You saved the day. I did not. Don't be silly. You gave their ball back. I said I didn't. The reboot does the day is saved at the end, but only on some episodes. And most of the time they do it, it's the twist. The new kids watching this are not going to get it. They're not used to seeing A Day is Saved at the end every single episode, so there is no joke to it. What questions? I understand if they're throwing a bone for us, but when you do that so often, especially in season one, it's kind of a problem. Even Teen Titans Go set up their villains before mocking them. Isn't it sad I'm basically implying this show is Teen Titans Go done wrong? I like Teen Titans Go since that's different enough to be its own separate thing from Teen Titans. Powerpuff 2016 is just diet Powerpuff Girls. It makes you say, what's the point? Just watch the old show. Anything done here was done better in the old show. Sure, the new series has more detailed backgrounds and a flashier intro, but there's no substance to it. It's just an empty, soulless world with three girls and whoever conveniently shows up. Cartoon Network should take this reboot and just shove it up their own ass. But who needs jokes when you got memes? If you need someone to sing so bad, you do it! Okay, that's it. I'm calling the Anti-Defamation League. That nose looks a little anti-Semitic. <laughs> Memes, twerking, current slang. Yes! I've seen commenters defend this as a way to modernize it for kids today. Modernize it? This isn't fucking Shakespeare. The original wasn't using vocabulary from the 1600s. Powerpuff Girls premiered 1998. Other than maybe a Nintendo 64 in one episode, that show was never modern. It was timeless. They weren't doing the Macarena and quoting Wayne's World. Yo, 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 Yogi, yo, 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 Yogi, yo. Let's take it back to Yo, Yogi, the 90s teen reboot of Yogi Bear. It's extreme hip with the kids and he has a skateboard and goes to the mall. For goth's sake, they turned Manila Gorilla into Manila Ice, as in Vanilla Ice. A chill out, Champette. This fox is Roxy's. He's got my name written all over him, okay? Okay. They take a simple, timeless cartoon from the past and try to modernize it for the 90s audience. Ironically, the more you modernize it, the less relevant it'll be in a few years. The worst you can do to a reboot is make it too trendy. What was trendy then is now a punchline to us today, and the same will happen to Powerpuff Girls. It'll be a time capsule of, wow, this is what people were into back then? Jeez. When what came before is more universal and timeless than the reboot intended for a later generation, you fucked up. So one thing that was kind of charming about the girls is the mayor would notify them about crimes through this cutesy plastic hotline toy phone that really has no place in a mayor's office or even should function as a phone, especially in emergencies. And we brought you this hotline phone, so if you're ever in trouble, you can just give us a call. Um, okay. Well, I already have a phone, so if you could please get to the point, as you can see, I'm a very busy man. Now, to modernize it, they just use an actual smartphone. That'd be like if you got Fred Flintstone's foot-powered car and put in an engine. From all the modernizations, at least cell phones make sense. And they got individual designs for each girl. It's a nice touch, yeah, but they just didn't get the joke. Let's go save the day. And their ratings. Let's wait for a dozen more episodes to come out. This video is wrapping up, but there's just so much wrong with this reboot I haven't even touched on. You'll learn why more when this review is continued in part two. But before I go, please stop asking if the creator Craig McCracken is working on this reboot. He is not working on this reboot. Please stop asking him on Twitter. <laughs> just leave the man alone. He suffered enough. <laughs> His baby is ruined. They ruined his three babies. 
play me out, Mr. Announcer Guy. So once again, the day is saved. Thanks to the original bonafide Powerpuff Girls. Except no substitute. Cartoon Cartoon Fridays. My name is Bubbles, and I'm on the Powerpuff Show. So what's coming up next, announcer, sir? Coming up next on Cartoon Cartoon Fridays, it's the Powerpuff Girls, followed by Grim and Evil at 8.30, and then it's Time Squad at 9. Right here on Cartoon Cartoon Fridays. Cartoon Cartoon Fridays.